Welcome to another episode of the Office Altering Higher and Empower with Molly McGrath podcast. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. If you're a first time listener, hopefully you'll become a long time listener. As always, I'm your show host, Molly McGrath, founder of Hiring and Empowering Solutions and creator of this revolutionary podcast. You can check us out at hiringandempowering.com. All right, welcome to another episode of Hire and Empower. I'm excited. Today we are going to talk about stress and why you need to stop having this as the default tonality and essence of your firm. When you have a new hire on your team and you hear them say, I know everybody's stressed, but and, or if it's even a complete sentence, I know everybody's stress. This is an interesting topic. And I really want to dive into this and address what is happening, why it's happening, and why you need to stop doing this and how to create a turnaround. I was on a call this week with a member of the law firm admin bootcamp. They just hired a new client service coordinator, super excited about that. We had been through multiple. And if anyone has hired for the revolving front door position, you fully, wholly understand that this struggle is real. Find a rock star. We get her in there. We're talking about onboarding and facilitating their weekly level 10 meeting show up and um when it comes time for her of where she can step up where she can lead what's working what's not working issues things of that nature i noticed in the meeting every time she spoke she kept saying i know everybody's stressed and this was like i'm putting little indians next to the paper like we did when we were in grammar school and it counted like seven times and i bet you we were 20 minutes into the meeting that she was saying this this is not uncommon i hear this constantly from new hires that people are stressed people are overwhelmed that people are busy and just the language and the tonality and the essence if you are hearing new employees communicate this, this is liquid gold for you to stop and realize that you have time management, focus management, project management issues within your firm, and quite possibly a culture issue. And I'm not saying this from a place to be negative Nancy, but it's a gift to recognize that. Pay attention to the the language that people are using in your firm. Before she even used these words, She looked like a deer in headlights. She'd show up every week in open coaching hour at law firm admin boot camp. I could see her at the front desk. She's um, she's distracted, moving every direction. She's on the front line. She's doing the class at the reception desk. There are clients coming, paralegals coming, attorneys coming, people handing stuff to her. And she's supposed to be in there to delegate the training and learning and onboarding to me. That's the most important position within the law firm. And I can see the look on her face where she just looks like a trauma victim, where she cannot even focus or what have you, constantly putting me on mute, answering the phone, things that nature. So she didn't even get the gift and grace of one hour of somebody else answering the phone so she could get properly trained. But it's really interesting just hearing the language of that and really stopping it. Yes, new legal assistant, new client service coordinator. I know everyone's stress and we all face this in the legal and the business community, but let's unpack this and see what's really going on. And I've been working with this firm and I know that we all know where the pain points are and we also have a path and plan for a turnaround and to get them in a place of systemization, consistency and persistency. So when we're talking about this, I ask her, you know, you keep mentioning this quite frankly, you know, frequently, and you keep communicating, I know everyone's stressed. Is there something specific that you really can share from your perspective? Yeah, and she had this nervous laugh, obviously, new kid on the block, don't want to feel like that they're, they don't know enough yet. They're not, I'm like, no, all that gobbledygook, get rid of it. From your perspective. What are you noticing and where do you feel that you can help out? 
And she said, well, I, you know, I know it is. I'm supposed to answer the phone. I'm supposed to take that pressure off of the paralegals, the attorneys, et cetera. And every time a phone call comes in, I feel really bad because I have to transfer it to the paralegals that do the intake. You know, this person in this department, different services, what have you, three different paralegals. So she's clear if a case comes in for X, Y, and Z, which paralegal to transfer it to for estate planning PI and for uh, family law. And so clear on that, but they're in conference rooms. So they're sitting in the conference room and they're meeting with clients and I have to interrupt them or put them in voicemail. And or if they're working on a matter in a file and I know what their caseload looks like, I have to interrupt them and transfer the client because they're also doing intake. And I don't feel like a value creator here. I don't feel like I'm making a difference for them, but nobody has time right now. They're incredibly stressed and busy and what have you. And I know what their workload is and I can't help anyone right now, at least with the phones, with the communication, et cetera. So I wish I could help out. And it's fascinating to me because I'm like this one identification for a brand new employee that is showing the biggest loophole within the law firm, which the most important is the first director of first impressions, the first 20 seconds of answering the phone. And every time you have to transfer someone, their faith and confidence goes through the floor. Even if the person helping them can help them, number one, but also number two, that you are showing where you have a breakdown in your process, because not only that, nobody could give me a, a report that showed me all the leads that came in, where they came from, what they were come from, because they're being transferred to three different assistants and they're writing them down on legal pads or putting them in Excel spreadsheets. They didn't have time to enter their notes within the database. It was just one thing after another that was showing a breakdown in the intake process, which then leads to an intake a breakdown in the conversion process process of getting people to hire, which is showing the breakdown in process and production, because this is why we can't move matters forward and why people are not getting their billable hours in because they're still doing intake because this is how we've always done it. Number one. And number two, the paralegals are really, really good at intake. They know the business, they know the persona of the client, they know all the things. So they're the brain surgeon within that. How could a client service coordinator possibly know how to figure out if this person is an ideal client and if we can serve them and if we should warrant them with a meeting with the attorney, et cetera. It was just one building block after another. And then the tonality around is just constantly stressed out because we're not leveling up. We're not being really clear on what we need to stop doing. Yes, I'm really great at all the things. I'm phenomenal at intake. I'm phenomenal at closing in the room. I'm phenomenal at the paralegal work. But when we're growing and we're scaling, we can't do all things. And so getting really clear on that and giving the person that you just hired the grace, when we hire people, when we employ people, whether it's quote unquote, just a receptionist or what have you, it is our duty to give them time, attention, and feedback. It is our duty to pour into them and give them the time to really become leaders. When we interview people, we're always like, do they show initiative? You know, are they a, a problem solver? All these business questions that we ask to figure out if they have what it takes to do the job. It's even fascinating to me for receptionist position and things of that nature. They pass with flying colors, but then they get in and it's a dumpster fire. Nobody's giving them the time to express those skill sets that we ran them through the ringer on when we were interviewing them to begin with. And so you just see crazy land all day long and the, it is what it is and this is how it's going to go, what have you. And so when I asked her this powerful question, like none of us are going to wake up one day and have just this blanket amount of time that we are going to have time to stop and figure this out and stop and catch up. When we wake up and we're caught up or when we wake up and we're no longer stressed, we are out of business. When there is a giant pause within anyone's job description or within your business, you're in trouble. 
you're in big trouble for now and probably six to eight months to come. So that's not good news when we are caught up and it's never just going to magically happen. So hiring this person and allowing this language and tonality and behavior of stressed, overwhelmed, and busy within your business is a giant clue of where people are not working within their unique ability. It's a giant clue of where you are have breakdowns in process and production, which by the way, impacts profitability, maybe not even profitability, just even making your monthly revenue goal. Many people are just wishing and praying that they could reach their monthly revenue goal so they can have their need to breathe goal, and then they'll strive for profit. But right now your problem might not even be profit. It might just be staying out of the red. And so when you have someone new on your team and they are using words like, I know everybody's stressed and they think they're being so, I don't want to bother you. You know, this is the way that it is. When they say that you're time out, Thank you for that gift of shining the flashlight on that, that this is how we're showing up. This is your new forever home. When we interviewed you, we wanted to make sure you were going to stick. We wanted to make sure you were going to stay. We were going to make sure that you, you know, we're not going to leave us all the things. And so now if you're telling us this, chances are People don't leave overworked jobs or what have you. They leave the energy uh, that's roaming around in the building. So if you pay attention this week, pay attention when you hear people use these terminologies. Like I know everyone's stressed because that key word when people, we all know when they use words like everyone, always, everything, things of that nature, it's a big clue that we need to stop, drop, and roll and look at our process. And when you're hiring people, give them the grace to come to you. As you've probably heard me say a million times, my coach always says the answer is in the room. The person at the front desk did not realize what they said, but where do you see that you can help out? She basically outlined where we have a massive breakdown in intake, number one, multiple layers of that. And then number two, why we cannot process and catch up and return clients' phone calls in, because we're not only talking about the intake calls coming, we're also talking about existing clients that are calling into this law firm and going to the respected paralegals as well. So that's all impacting all facets, all facets of your business. And guess what? I looked afterwards, I text the attorney, I'm like, it's a 50-50 crapshoot if this girl's going to make it. So we're on the third person in this position. Can we talk about the common denominator here? You want people that will last, people that are leaders, people that don't job hop, and all the things that we ask in an in interviewing process to make sure we hire right, but then they come into a dumpster fire. This girl's smart, she's sharp, she gets it, she wants it, she has a capacity for it. So let's get deeply curious and get a pizza and have a mini workshop and a lunch and learn and unpack the energy and the tonality called I know everyone's stressed and get deeply curious about that, whiteboard it, workshop it, and figure out from each person, from each department in regards to why that is occurring and then anchor it to the step in the process and allow the new person that you had, give them a shot to start taking over the parts of the process that they should be doing as director of first impression and on the front lines and give them the the deep respect that you hired them, right? That they have the skill set, they have the knowledge, they have the maturity, they have the compassion, they have the empathy, all the skills that are needed in order to convert a client from initial contact into an initial appointment. And then the paralegals and or attorneys can shine and do everything that they can, even if one out of five are unqualified and shouldn't be there that the cost of that is greater than a paralegal doing intake while they're also doing production as well and responsible for billable hours, whether you're doing flat fee or billable hours. 
So this is my invitation to y'all this week. Stop using language that is around stress. Pay attention and listen to words like stress, overwhelm, and busy, and things of that nature, and take it as you spend so much money on business coaches and strategy and fly all over the country to go to all these different conferences to learn how to uplevel your business and 10X this and 20X this and get the entrepreneurial freedom, which you deserve and which is possible. But there's the answers in your office before you go chasing strategy. Pay attention to the language that is swelling through your walls of your business and the offices through your business business and give people the time to really show up for what you hired them for, which is efficiency, effectiveness, profitability, and all that. So if this resonates with you, if you're experiencing this, shoot me an email, comment on the podcast, DM me whatever you need to do and let me know, like you're speaking my language. I fear this is happening or I'm seeing that this is happening and absolutely I want to change it. I want to end the year with a declaration that we are no longer a law firm of stress and overwhelm. We are a law firm of ease and joy and flow and consistency and persistency the majority of the time and everybody's working within their unique ability because they are fully wholly clear on what their um, passion keys are and where their value creators within the firm. So this is the time opportunity to create legal leaders within your firm that help lead you all so you can leverage and get the entrepreneurial freedom that you need. So pay attention to the new people on the block. What words are they saying? They're telling you exactly where your problems are within your practice. All right. Until next time, continue going out there. Team members, for you too, use your voice. No more suffering in silence. The answer is in the room. We've reached the end of yet another episode of the Hire and Empower with Molly McGrath podcast, where dream teams of entrepreneurs in an entrepreneur's world really do come true. Listen, whether you're a business owner, employee, executive, or hiring manager, we fully understand hiring, onboarding, and leadership is expensive, exhausting, often overwhelming, and absolutely time-consuming for the already taxed professional. Well, we have your back on all fronts. For 25 years and counting, we have transformed over 4,000 law firm teams into the most efficient, resourceful, and profitable asset of your business. Check out our Smart Hire Solution, our employee leadership program, and the 66-day law firm turnaround at hiringandempowering.com. 